Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Sid Meier's Civilization 5. My name is Michael Batman Guy and today we sadly say an unexpected goodbye to the unexpected Spanish Inquisition. Yes, this is the short and sweet finale episode because I should have known it was coming. We have run into some crash issues. Uh, specifically, if I were, and I'm not going to this time, hover this cursor over that little happy face up there, try to get a breakdown of the Empire happiness, uh, the game decides to crash. It cannot possibly comprehend just how happy uh, the people of Batland truly are. And this is a real shame, because we are doing fantastically. Uh, Gotham is the most wondrous city in all of the land, having literally just about every wonder ever. What it, what are like the two that I had to put somewhere else? Um, we had to put Machu Picchu in Metropolis because it had a mountain. And I think the Petra over here because we gave that the desert. Petra, oh and the Saltern. That's a, a modded edition there. But yes, we're on our way towards the architecture which would allow us for the Hermitage, the Porcelain Tower, the Taj Mahal, Fizzy, a sewer system, plus 10% of food is carried over after a new citizen. But we'd have so much extra food carried over in all of our cities. Oh, it'd be fantastic. And and we're even actually, believe it or not, somewhat close to finally uh, building some of those national wonders. Requires uh, a barracks in literally all of our cities. Uh, we, we are making progress. We are spamming the map like there's no tomorrow. Um, because it used to be there wasn't it. Or, well, I guess now there isn't a tomorrow. This is it. This is the end. This is how far we've gone. We have almost but not quite brushed up against Poland here. Um, we're starting to surround America. Still haven't really explored uh, Carthage here. Um, I've kind of briefly, you know, just barely uncovered their territory. Um, same with the Greeks down here. Just starting to get a feel for, for what they have and what they can do. Um, running into some issues here uh, with uh, Shoshone. Sorry, there we go. It's like, no, Pocatello, that's the name of the leader. Shoshone here. Um, especially with this city <laughs> being right up in their face. Oh, great fun. Great fun. And of course, let's not forget Polynesia and all of uh, that conflict there, and their accursed Catholicism religion, Pfft, that'll never catch on. Um, yeah, we're doing fantastic. Um, economically, we've started spending our gold like mad on these new cities uh, to super boost them, give them a jump start by buying up all of the basic buildings, spending nearly, well, actually over 5,000 uh, gold per turn and only gaining uh, just over half that at the moment. You can see I'm still missing a couple trade routes there and I believe I can still look at the victory screen. Yes, okay. We were aiming for the religious victory. What all did we really have to do? We need to get Zoroastrianism, um, that is to say Batmania. He doesn't recognize the, the unique names here. Founded by me. 70% spread, uh, that is, I believe, by city. So I needed to have 70% of the cities have Batmania as the major religion. 69%, almost there. We certainly have more than enough followers. That's purely population. That's because my empire is ginormous on population. So we have literally more than double the required followers to be de declare a religious victory catch there is the holy cities, only one out of seven. To convert a holy city in this game is a pain in the Tukas, um, because they will always, um, we had briefly gotten Washington to flip, um, but even if we were to say flip New York and flip Washington, uh, you can see he's somehow producing 54 pressure for Buddhism, even though there's, there's only one city here, right? New York is getting nine pressure because there's one nearby city uh, with Buddhism. Washington is getting nine of that pressure from New York, uh, but if we got rid of that, they would 
still have what 45 pressure uh, for just from being the holy city for Buddhism. So we always have to be fighting that uh, continuously, which means basically like surrounding it with uh, inquisitors and missionaries uh, just to constantly bombard it with Batmania, uh, which would be hilarious and fun, um, but take a long, long time. These turns have gone on long enough. I'm sure if you're actually still watching here, you have the patience of a rock, and I commend you. Um, but thanks for joining me in this endeavor. It's been a fun game. I have had a lot of fun just um, steamrolling over the AI. <laughs> Not really. I, I haven't really done much to them, uh, but relatively speaking, I've conquered a ginormous amount of land. We've had the massive empire uh, to the point where I've almost ran out of city names. In fact, I, I went through the end of my list and got, you may have noticed, um, once we got through the most popular ones, the, the leftovers were kind of going alphabetically there. There are not a whole lot left. I think I have like 20 more city names at best. So we would definitely have to stop settling at that point. Uh, so we're nearly there. And um, that's that's going to be it. This has been a blast, uh, but it's time to move on. It's time to continue with Civilization VI into the future. That That is the future of gaming, and maybe we'll come back and, and do something special with five. but uh, honestly, Civ VI is, is great. Um, I like it. It has all of the best features of, of five and, and then some, and there's even some great mods already up and running for the game, so we can even explore something maybe like this future. And it has religious victory built right in. Um, so here's my proposal. Why don't we just take this concept and move on to a religious victory via the Spanish in Civilization VI? We'll call it Spanish Inquisition II, Electric Boogaloo. Anyways, that's going to do it for now. Uh, thank you very much for watching. My name is Michael Batman Guy. I will see you next time.